Okay, thank you Mark for that, that was very informative. You probably see that we're actually um, recording this today, it's actually for everybody's benefit here, we're going to actually give everybody copies of the a DVD afterwards, just because there's so much information that gets uh, transmitted in these things that you get to about two or three weeks time and you're like, you know, what did he say about that? So it's, that's the reason for that. So this is the commercial spot now, or maybe not so much for commercial spot, but just a little bit of a, an update on what's happening and what, and what we're doing. As you know, we're in quite a unique situation in the industry with what we're doing in terms of supplementation and uh, with liquids. The history. How it all started nine years ago. All started with a farm in Canada. Um, who was looking to find an alternative to putting regular granular supplements in the compost. Um, so we had done some work using liquids and the idea was to put a liquid to the compost instead of putting in regular granular supplements. We thought that would be very easy and we thought we would get very quick results but these things don't always work that way. Um, but we persevered with it and what we actually found was that putting a liquid through the whole depth of the compost, although that didn't work particularly well or was quite inconsistent, what did work was when we actually concentrated a liquid supplement, either in the top interface layer of the compost or even in the casing layer. So that's basically where we are. So we're in a quite unique situation. We're not following anybody else. We're learning and evolving from our own trials and we're growers and we're working very, who are working very closely with us. And we are at the leading edge. We've got nobody else to refer to. But we're going to say we've got a lot of supportive growers and a lot of stuff is coming together, particularly in the last six to 12 months. Lessons we've learned along the way, feeding. As you know, and as I've said before, um, the mushroom's not like a plant. Um, it has high fee. And these hyphae exude enzymes, and these enzymes come into contact with the food source, could be the supplement, it's made of the compost source, and those materials get broken down and they get reabsorbed into the network. And all this thing about feeding mycelium is all about filling the network. It's all about getting the mycelium to bring up that nutrient source that's broken down and to swell this structure as much as possible. The more that we have within this structure here, the more that when we come to do the pinning process and we start to produce the mushrooms, the more food is within the network that can push up and give you yield and quality. Conditions. We thought in the beginning that mycelium was feeding constantly um, with this enzyme activity. And it does to a degree, but what we have found is that the higher the temperature is, and we're in this region of 23, 24 degrees, we have a lot more of this enzyme activity and therefore a lot better mycelium feeding. So you have to think, like in your crops, when, particularly in the case run, are you at these temperatures where the mycelium is feeding? So, I'm sure you all realise there you've got a time slot in the case run, that once you get to the airing point, your temperatures are starting to go down then, and this activity and this feeding is starting to go down. So, very important, we need to make sure that we're getting as much filling up of this network as possible during the case run period. It's really, really key. We also found along the way that it's very easy to damage cacking. We have this variable in the casing there. And the original product that we had, that we, we developed in the Canadian market, was a product that was pre-mixed in the casing for three days before. So it had fully reacted in the casing before the cacking had even touched it even. But when we started to use the original product and we then tried to mix it immediately, say, then we would find that it would damage the cacking. Wouldn't kill it, 
anything like that. All it would do is it would knock back its growth. And if we knock back its growth, all it means is it's not feeding for maybe one or two days. Those one or two days are critical because we only have a short period of those optimum conditions. So we looked at all sorts of technologies to try to encourage this. And one of the things that we've utilized is the use of plastic microperforated film. And one of the things we're trying to do is to ensure that we get the casing up to a similar temperature to the compost temperature during that case run period. If you, for example, have got active compost, let's say you're 27, 28 degrees in the compost, probably your air is at 17 or 18, could be even lower even. So your casing then is at a cold temperature, therefore your khaki and your mycelium that's growing in the casing where we've got the nutrient supply is also too cold and it's not optimal. So this is one of the tools that we can use with growers to help to encourage this. We use microperforated, that's very important as well because this is an aerobic process. We need to make sure that it breathes. If we don't use microperforated plastic, we'll get anaerobic and stagnation. Feed the compost or the casing. We looked at both. We start off in the beginning, applying liquid water on the compost. That's a product you've probably heard of called microfeeder. Obviously it had a direct effect on the mycelium and we know for sure with all the work that we've done that this zone just around the interface layer is very very important. There seems to be a different type of mycelium in this zone and this mycelium reacts in a different way there's much more of it. So it is a very important area. It works very well with phase three this product particularly when you fill one day in case the next day. But there are challenges with this approach. One of the things that we found was that obviously the bulk of the industry, as you know, is phase three. They fill in case at the same time. Afterwards, they then put very large volumes of water in. And that water can then wash away that product you put on the interface layer. So became a great challenge. So we've moved away from this direction and we've focused more on the casing layer. So we're adding a liquid during the casing run. Uh, it can be watered physically onto the casing or it can be put into a casing mixer. The advantage of this makes it easy to apply. You can control the timing of the application. Anything from the very beginning of the case run right through to the very last day of the case run. We can use plastic to activate it, as I talked about earlier. And then a big breakthrough for us is that we've developed in the last year a new formulation which overcomes damage to the cacking which the original product had. So what it means now is that we can now put this product on at any point during the case run or even afterwards and it actually encourages the mycelium to feed that's in the casing. And that's not just um, the mycelium from the compost growing in. What's also very important is the cack itself, because that cack is mycelium that's growing as well. So if the cack is feeding and the, and the, and the mycelium growing from the compost is feeding at the same time, what it means is when that all interconnects, the whole network has that much more food inside of it before it starts. So it's very important. Just to give you a, show you a quick video, it's only very short, how the product's applied just with regular Watering tree. This is actually being watered on the last water of the case run. This is the new product. You can see you get this very, very white appearance on the casing, which is a little bit scary when you first see it. 
I'm sure Mark was a bit frightened. He was on the phone pretty rapidly. <laughs> but yes, as, as Mark says, it actually disappears within 48 hours. The mycelium does take it up. So. Yeah, we just did that just for the point of just just for the video, just just to show. But basically, you would be you'd be applying it at the same time. So, any system that people are using, um, a lot of people are using um, overhead um, irrigation systems as well. The product works through those as well. Um, you know, basically all, all application systems. We've had no issues. Nozzles don't block up or anything like that. <laughs> They always get left behind, actually. It's something you have to constantly check. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, have you tried your product with beer cooling as opposed to using plastic? Uh, no, we haven't yet, no. Because with bed cooling, then you can run your room at a warmer sure. temperature and exactly. get, you know, 23, 24 in your casing. Yeah, yeah. So we're trying to, you know, keep the planet green, getting rid of all the plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, sure, no, absolutely. I mean, I mean, there's some new farms which are working on that technology. We're actually involved with a company... Um, in Holland that's using um, irrigation drip lines, you've probably heard of them or seen them, um, and those are being used in conjunction with these, um, uh, you know, heated pipe systems. You can either put hot water through them or you can put cold water through them to control them. But as you say, the big advantage is then you can control the compost and you can run a very high air temperature. So yes, absolutely. You can get your crop up way faster too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, there, there are definite advantages there. And one of the reasons why we're actually working with this um, system, this drip irrigation, is there's the potential then to be able to put a liquid in at any point during the case run, maybe even possibly multiple times, maybe um, you know, uh, you know, in multiple stages during the crop. So there's a lot of potential possibilities with liquid in the future. I think, I think the other thing is actually with the plastic at the moment, it's using what's available, yeah. you know, and, and proving what can and can't be done, mm. either mm. in terms of what to do with products or what yeah. you're trying to get out. Yeah, yeah. I, I just thought that if you're trying to get those temperatures, if you if you use beer cooling, you have way more advantage. Well, I think that's fine, mm. but there's not that many growers that have those abilities mm. at the moment to do that. And I don't know how far, actually, because Christians were the ones that were doing this originally. Yeah. I don't know how far they've been in some way, because there was a lot of um, interest and excitement, but you don't hear much about it at the moment. So whether they found that there were technical difficulties in doing it, but for most people at the moment, I mean, that's uh, Stuart and I crossed over on the policy yeah. um, for slightly different reasons. Yeah. Well, you, you've got to make something happen. You know, you're saying about trying to get speed into your crops. Um, when you're on a farm where you've got limited ability, it does create a completely different atmosphere in the case, yeah. which is beneficial. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. We did actually try paper out of interest, you know, um, instead of that from, from a more environmentally friendly angle, but it's not the same. There's a subtle difference when you use plastic because you're not just, you're also trapping gases as well, not just CO2, there are other gases involved and these are things which actually encourage the mycelium. Yeah, we tried that as well, we tried putting mats on top as well, just, yeah. you know, your normal shelving and then it creates a warmer environment. Have you tried putting yeah. plastic underneath? Yeah. Because yeah, that, that can work very well actually, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. double wrapped like plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're trying, sorry, is feeding at all helpful for getting sick and flush and food flush through? Is, is it what, sorry? Is, is, is feeding sick and a food flush when you're putting that feed over the top again to get that next boost in mycelium? Is that, have you done any work on Yeah, we started that at the moment. What, what's happened prior to this, we only had one product that was pre-mixed in the casing before, so obviously you can only do it at one point in time. Now we have this new product now, 
we're able to do it in multiple stages. So the whole thing's opened up a Pandora's box. So we've got a lot of growers at the moment are doing all sorts of different things now. They're putting it in different stages in the case run. We've got people who are trying it, putting it at the end of the first flush, end of the second flush, doing all sorts of combinations. So there's a lot of interesting things happening at the moment. It's still very early days yet in getting any, any definite conclusions on things, but it's, um, it's, you know, it's very exciting from that perspective. No, no, not at all. And in fact, I'm going to I'll raise that point in a, just, just a little bit late about that. There's actually some benefits in doing, doing that, in fact, and there doesn't seem to be any compromises in quality. And we've got one very large operation in the UK now is actually applying it um, right before they pick the mushrooms on the first flush. And I know over here and say maybe in, in the States and other countries, People are used to watering on the first flushes, but like in the UK and Ireland, for example, it's an absolute no-no. You know, the cardinal rule is thou shalt not water on the first flush because of, because of quality. Um, but they're actually doing this at that stage because we have one of the issues with that is you have a very long time period. If you, for example, won't water on your first flush, your last water application might be on, say, day four. Then the next time you're watering, when you're clearing off that first flush, it could be day 18, day 19. And that's an awful long time without a drink. You know, you know, you'd feel pretty thirsty yourself. So it's, you know, and that has an effect also, and Mark's going to actually um, cover this point as well. That also has a big effect then on your ability to be able to rewater back in your second flushes. It all affects the way the mycelium grows in the casing and can make it trickier to then get that water back in again. And that's one of the areas, if we're looking to increase our yield, we want to do it on the second flush. Most of us have got plenty of bloody mushrooms on the first flush. We don't, you know, we've actually probably got too many. We don't want any more mushrooms. The point where we can actually get more yield and more quality, the logical flush to target is the second flush. Third flush as well. But, you know, third flush, when you're getting later on, you're getting more into the area of disease and things like that. So very much if we can increase second flush yield and productivity, then it's a big move forward. No, because basically what we're dealing with is, is, a, is a food grade product. So there's no issues of residues. This particular one of this very big uh, company in the UK, they supply all supermarkets. There's a lot of work, residue work. There's no issues. The products we make, they're all organically certified, but they're basically food grade ingredients. What is the purpose of watering on mushrooms? Uh, are they seeing that they're getting a, a weight benefit or is it a quality benefit? They're a combination of both. Combination of both. You'll see some data actually, we've got some data just a little bit further on which just shows um, what they're doing at the moment. But yeah, they're seeing, they're seeing an increase in yield um, and no decrease in quality. And in some cases they're actually getting improvements in quality. So I'll carry on. I want to introduce a new term yeah, because um, a lot of confusion. We've been talking about supplement for years and supplement we associate with um, putting in the compost. And what happens is we then start, growers start then talking about, okay, right, we're putting supplement to the compost, supplement the casing, and you, the whole thing creates some confusion. So we're actually going to create a new name for um, what we're doing in the casing layer, and that's to call these products complements. The reason we chose that name is we just looked in a dictionary to find the best thing to explain what we're doing. If you look at the Oxford Dictionary there, the definition of a complement is to contribute extra features to someone or something in such a way as to improve or emphasize their qualities, to add or make complete. So we believe this is a very good description of what we're doing. So we're going to start to use this expression more and more. OK. Should we use the microliquid, which is our name for our casing product alone, or with existing supplements? It could actually be used in both situations. 
Growers who cannot apply supplement evenly or don't have enough cooling, they can use it in their own right. It can be used in phase two or phase three systems. Big question everybody asks is, is there not enough nutrition already in the compost when you're using regular supplement? We've actually engaged uh, mushroom scientists who's done a lot of work with us over the last two years looking at this whole area because we see a definite effect with what we're doing. We have scientific evidence now that there are temporary issues with availability of nutrition whilst the mushroom crop is growing. And it's probably due to the, the nature of the mycelium network. We have this very complex nature of all this rooting structure, this sudden demand for nutrition, the flush study comes on very, very quickly. And you've got to push a lot of food up into the mushroom in a very, very short period of time. One of the things that's also very important is a lot of our customers they're actually using both products together. They're using what they're already using and they're using our complement products as well because most people basically want to produce more yield and or better quality because it's an economic thing. As you increase your yield and you bring your unit costs down. Okay, bit of data for you to prove the effects of it. This here is very simple table. This is what we all know already. Left hand side is no supplement in compost, nothing in the casing compared to soya in the compost. This is what we're normally already doing at the moment. So what we already know is that we put stuff into the compost and we gain between 10 and 15 percent yield. So what we did was last year, then this is one of the trials we did, we did a big trial to do comparisons with supplements in the compost, supplements in the casing, all simultaneously at the same time in the same trial to prove categorically what was happening. Same trial, same compost, same casing, everything all the same. This is just a variant, so instead of having Soya in the compost, this is our organic gold product in the compost uh, supplement. Only difference is with our product, our supplement product, is we have less protein in and we have a high lipid content. But at the end of the day, yields are basically the same. No difference. The only interesting differences there are with our supplement product is that when we use lipids, we always see higher piece weights in the mushrooms. Another interesting pattern we actually see with soya-based products is you always tend to see a much higher third flush. Ours we see more in two, but then you see there's always this big surge with soya. It must be something to do with the fact that the way that the protein breaks down. That's a common pattern we see for many, many years. Okay, let's get to the interesting stuff. Soil in the compost, now we're putting a complement in the casing. Yields going up. We see this big jump in yield. What's also very interesting as well is see this here, how at the same time as the yield is going up, the piece weights are going up on all the flushes. So we know when you see that the yield goes up and the piece weight's going up simultaneously at the same time, the weight of mushrooms is going up, something is definitely happening. Still not sure about it. Exactly the same table again, same trial that we're in here, same compost, same casing. Our supplement, organic gold in the compost. Then we put the to the casing. You see it's the same pattern, yeah? Yes, you're, you're gaining yield by having, um, well, some of it's actually more mushrooms, but basically, yeah, you're getting basically heavier mushrooms. We're, we're increasing the yield. So, so something synergistically is happening when we combine the two things together. 
So our conclusions, two supplements in two zones seems to be the key to unlock more potential from the compost. And this potential is coming from yield and from piece weight. And this piece weight is very important, yeah, because, you know, it's no good just increasing the yield if it, if it ruins the quality. We want to be able to have more yield and better quality at the same time. A few important points. If you change one thing, say for example by adding a complement in to the casing, all your technology and te techniques has to change thereafter. It's like with anything that you do in mushrooms, yes? You know why you can't do exactly the same as you do before. So we spend a lot of time now with growers guiding them through the process to make subtle changes in what they do when they put both things in together. Also, it's not just about nutrition and putting food in. Water is fundamental for nutrition uptake. It's the mechanism which the nutrition travels, yes? So as we increase nutrition, we've also got to increase the water to aid its transfer. That's very, very important. We've had classic examples where somebody will get a higher first flush, for example, by adding in the complement. But then, because they keep their watering pattern the same, they haven't put more water in, although they've had more mushrooms go out the first flush, then they end up being shorter water for the second flush, and they lose, say they gain 10% on the first flush, by the end of the second flush, they're only back to maybe 5 or 6% gain. So, more mushrooms coming out, you've got to put more water in. Your structure of your mycelium in the casing is very, very important as well. If you've got small mycelium tubes, you've got low water capacity and movement, and that affects the nutrient uptake, and that's something that Mark's going to pick up on a bit later, yeah? So there are challenges for us. Yes, we're in a biological system. We've got air and water sharing the same zones in the casing, so we've got to create a balance in these. Any questions? What do you think is happening then? Do you think the better results with the complement is because there's nutrition coming from the complement or it's strengthening the mycelium so that it can access more nutrition from the complement? It's a good question. I think it's a bit of combination of both. A bit of combination of both. Certainly what we are adding to the complement is definitely a nutrition source and it's obviously very easily available. The mycelium is able to take it up very quickly and very easily and you'll see a slide in a little bit which will actually show where we've actually proved that the uptake now can be as little as three days. So yes it is a nutrient source. The second question is uh, they're impressive numbers. How many replications of those trials to verify the numbers? We typically have between three and four replications. Yeah. A lot of the work we do as well, you, you've got, you have two levels of, of tests. Yeah? You have tests where you do purely scientific work, which is always with a lot of replications. And then the other type of work you have is practical work where you're doing comparisons. We always do that with less replications. Is it on trial shelf first? Is what, sorry? Uh, they're, on, they're on trays, little trays. And you're using plastic every time when yes. you Yes. Yes. Yeah, we use plastic every time, yeah. Yeah, because the other thing is when, when you're doing trials on a smaller scale, um, because you want to preserve the activity in the compost, you've got to use the plastic. So at what stage you fill the room and add the supplement, and then obviously you need to get the water into the compost. Yep. So, how, what do you, like a two-day window to get water in and then put plastic on for two days? Or? Yeah, well, in, in, in our case, it, it, well, in farms, that's normally the case. Exactly as you say, you'd normally have maybe two days watering. And what growers are trying to do now is they'll, they'll try and get the watering in the shorter period of time so they can have the plastic on for as long as possible. If they can get a minimum of two days, then 
that's ideal yes some people are even getting three days even but it depends on your cycle and some people are on day five some people are on day six and day seven um, some people put a lot of water in the beginning some people put less water in the beginning so but yeah basically the, the, the bottom line is the longer we can leave it on for the better the effect okay one of these we also looked at as well was this yield increase we see in the piece weight. What is it? Is this weight that we're getting, is it coming from water? Are the mushrooms more full of water or are they full of dry matter? And this is one of the things we've done a lot of work on in the last year in, in all the trials that we've been doing. And we're, and we're only just getting one farm now at last to actually physically do this work as well to... Um, confirm what we're seeing but basically the only way to do it is to take mushrooms which you've harvested cut them up and slice them put them into an oven at 80 degrees for between 12 and 14 hours and then you get what the percentage of dry matter is in the mushrooms it's the only way of checking it and we get a very consistent pattern with this Looks a little bit more complicated than, 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 it, than it is, but basically there's five columns here. That's our situation with nothing. In, so these numbers here, first flush, second flush, third flush, they are percentage of dry matter in the mushrooms. Okay, That's actually dry matter yield in kilos per square meter, and that was the actual kilos per square meter of the trial. Yeah. Then we've got just four different treatments of complements. That's the very original product, which was pre-mixed in the casing. This is the new product, which we mixed in the casing. We have a higher rate just because the concentration of this new product is twice. We have to put twice as much in as the original product. Um, this new product is a calcium suspension. So if we go too concentrated, it becomes too thick. So that's why we have a uh, we put it in a much higher rate. And then here, instead of mixing it into the casing in a casing mixer, this is our water on modality, and then we try it at, at, at a higher rate here. Okay. But the key things here in the numbers you can see here, highlighted in the second flushes here. We're seeing increases in the dry matter percentage in the second flushes with the new product. We see overall the dry matter is increased. Uh, and if you look, work out a percentage there, the original product we had used to show a 7.1% increase in dry matter. But now with these new variations, we're seeing very substantial increases in dry matter. And at every trial we do, we're getting similar numbers. So this is not something that's just a, a one-off. Now, what's very important with this as well is that's, that's just based on the mushrooms themselves. What you need to do is to take this number here, the percentage of dry matter, and multiply it by the yield so that you get your overall output. So the same table we do here we've actually multiplied the dry matter percentage in the flushes by the actual yield in those cases and these are all kilos per square meter dry matter so you can see here again this effect is quite obvious in the second flush we're actually getting more yield I mean, this very apparent effect in the second flush Quick question there, Stuart. Where you have no additions of first column, yeah, plastic as well. Yes, yes, yeah. We we did that with everything. We have we we tried in the beginning. We didn't know if the plastic was an effect purely because of the plastic, and the plastic will have a little bit of an effect. Uh, not necessarily for yield. You might see 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a kilos per square meter increase. The, the effect really only happens when the complement's there as well. But what you'll see if you put the plastic on, 
what you'll actually observe is that mycelium strength. You can see it, the mycelium, Mark probably say the same thing. You'll see the mycelium is stronger, it's better. So that must be helping the connection between what you're drawing out of the compost to what the mushrooms are growing above it. So, you know, it does give some benefits, but it doesn't, and you see that with your eyes, but it doesn't necessarily on its own correspond to a yield increase. So where are we now? Regular use by growers, UK, France, Spain, Canada, Croatia. We're starting in Ireland. USA, we're doing trials at the moment, and hopefully the future New Zealand and Australia. Grower feedback. Comments from growers. They see more whiteness in the mushrooms. In the browns, where they don't particularly want to see whiteness, <laughs> they are seeing a better shape. It's definitely a, a difference in the shape of the mushrooms. I think that's something that you've seen, Mark, isn't it, on your farm? You've seen that on your farm, haven't you? Better shape of the mushrooms? Shape. You've seen better shape. The shape is definitely improved. The, the dome is retained much more. And one of the reasons that we, we got involved in doing this is that um, it was very much to improve second flushes. And we found that the mushrooms were maturing too fast, running out of food. And the underneath of the cap was just flattening all the time. And uh, that certainly changed that. Better shelf life, and this is a direct indication of that dry matter. You know, but, you know, if you've got more dry matter in the mushrooms, then it obviously has ob obviously implications for shelf life. Faster picking. Now, one of the things that's very interesting is these last two points here um, at the bottom. And we got these in the beginning, and we were a little bit unsure as to um, why this was. We were getting reports from people in Ireland, where they have very, very wet casing layers, less blotch in the mushrooms, and then we had growers who were telling us they were seeing less verticillium. We're not exactly 100% sure why, but the one thing we're doing is we're applying this product very, very late on in the case run. So it could be that, and, and the products obviously that we have we have natural preservatives in them. Anything that you make that's a supplement product, or in our case, a complement product, you have to have preservatives in to protect the product itself. And these could be having some influence, maybe on the emerging pins, or doing something to protect the casing itself. But that's something that we definitely observe. Are you implying that my harvesters are going to get faster? I spray it on the shelf. They're going to get what, sorry? They're going to get what, sorry? Are you implying my harvest is going to pick faster? <laughs> well, this is, what, this is what growers are telling you. You just make your comments that growers are saying. But if you've got denser mushrooms, obviously, then you're probably going to have, you know, improvements in picking. All other things being <laughs> suitable. But, yeah, this, 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 these are just comments which growers have told us. Now, of course, this whole thing's opened up a big um, situation with lots of growers now because this new product, they now people want to start applying it at different stages. And one of the questions is, is can we put it in at the end of the flush to maybe boost the next flush? How could that work? Um, so we're now working with a number of growers, particularly in this area here, to see if we see an effect or not. Uh, we started working with a big farm just before Christmas. In fact, they actually wanted to apply it um, also not just between first and second flush, but also um, just prior to first flush. So I was a little bit scared about this, to be honest with you, because uh, they wanted to put the product on at this stage, and we had no experience of watering it physically on top of mushrooms. The product is like a creamy color, so we didn't know if you watered it on, whether that might make the mushrooms creamy or whatever. So um, we had to try and raise ahead of this other farm to try and do a trial, but we had nothing in our trial unit that was on first flush. So all we had in, in the system was um, a third flush that we finished. It was just before Christmas. So 
we picked off the remains of what was a fourth flush on this thing, cleared it off, and we applied it onto some small tubs, a unit here. So literally, we applied supplement on this side. So this is now a fifth flush. And on the other side, we applied straight water. And you can see here, and this is three days ago. So three days previously, this had been watered on. You see small mushrooms here this side. We're seeing disease, not as many mushrooms. This was then applied again at the end of the next flush. The same thing happened again. So at that stage, compost is exhausted. Something is definitely happening. Okay, quickly, see a couple of farms which are using our products on a regular basis. Uh, this is a tray farm in the UK, makes their own compost. First flush, very nice white mushrooms, very nice shape. Second flush, you have to excuse the <coughs> colour here. I'm sure you know yourselves, you try and take photographs in buddy tray rooms. <laughs> You always get these were actually white looking but because of the way the photograph was taken they don't look as white as they should do it's just because of the photography it's just a poor photographer yeah not the mushrooms themselves another second flush been thinned out a bit again you can just see here nice shape very heavy production Third flush pinning. Look at that for a third flush. It actually looks as good as a second flush. Another third flush. That's pinning at the moment again. Looks very nice. Some numbers. Micro liquid in the casing only. This farm doesn't always supplement in his compost. He's a phase two operation. 24875 versus 22869 without. 21529 versus 2549. That was actually on a low fill. That was about um, 19 pounds a square foot. I don't know what that is in new currency. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, this here is micro liquid plus organic gold. 24188 versus 22822. This here actually, that was on two flushes. No third was picked. They had issues on that week with pickers. Some, somebody hadn't told the picky advisor that it was, a, it, was, it was a holiday week and they ended up having about 10 pickers off and they shouldn't have been off. So. And that's phase two compost, uh, 4,700 square feet in a room. Shelf unit. Cheese Fresh, this is a modern high-tech unit in the UK, 48 rooms, 600 square metres. Um, applying the supplement, they have an ir ir irrigation system over the beds. Uh, this is the kit they use for applying it. So what they do is they take the concentrate, which we supply in an IBC. That goes into a mixing tank to dilute it. It's agitated and then it's pumped out through the system then that goes to the overhead irrigation lines in the room. Um, the product I've been mentioned earlier, it's a suspension. So you do have to take compressed air in the beginning, just to agitate it to get it all into solution before you draw it off into the tank. That, that's, that's just a little lance they develop just for um, bubbling, it, bubbling the concentrate up. They mark off on the IBC exactly what they need to draw off, so they make it very, very simple in terms of the application. So mushrooms, I didn't quite get there early enough that day. This is the first flush. This is uh, day two picking, about midday. They've already been through and they've had one pass already of picking. They do like um, 
repeat passes uh, as they do in many farms in the UK. They'll go through once and they'll come back to the beginning again and then they'll go through again. So this is, this is on the second pass. Strong second flush coming through. That's a little bit of interflush at the front. Okay, some numbers, and there's a lot of numbers on the screen there. That's our standard rate that we're applying. They're also playing around with different rates as well. Uh, these here are all products that have got the complement applied. These are all combination of, of, of comparison houses. So they're filling about nine rooms a week. So they're filling multiple rooms every week with our product, and then they have a number of rooms as, as comparisons without it. So it's, it's early days, but looking at the numbers here, I've marked all the ones which are basically higher compared to the comparison rooms. And I've looked at the second flushes. These are actually being applied um, before first flush. So we're looking at the effect on the second flush here. You can see here we're getting increased numbers. These vary, but we, you know, we're, seeing, we're seeing increases. The best until last, as I mentioned before, uh, we're very much limited in the UK by the fact that we don't water on mushrooms uh, past the case run. This farm is now doing multiple growing rooms every week. This is the day before first picking. I know you can pick that out there. You can see how wet those are. The product has been applied. You can see there are mushrooms touching there. For me, that would be dynamite. Yes, we would see... You know, a day later, ginger blotch and all sorts of things there. But they're not seeing that. They're basically seeing no loss of whiteness. Uh, and that's not subjective. These guys have bought, he told me, he told me uh, a 10 grand bit of kit, which actually measures mushroom whiteness. So they didn't say the mushrooms were whiter in this case. But what they are saying is there's no loss of whiteness compared to when they don't put it in. That's measurement a meter. No blotch, no water windows. Okay, and just so you can see there, this is their cropping chart. They're putting in about 15 to 16 litres in, in the case run. And then here, all those days later, that's your Nutrigain going in, in four litres a square metre. And one of the things that they're seeing when they put in this water so late, they're seeing the casing is in much better condition and it's responding much better to putting water in post first flush here. Any questions? Yeah, when you so when you've got the plastic on, as soon as you take the plastic off, do you put the air on? Uh, no, not normally. Um, some growers are like going up to about 12 hours before. I actually prefer about 24 hours before. Because um, when you pull that off, what happens, you've got a lot of moisture trapped on there. That moisture can drop on and that can um, have an effect. Then you actually end up the casing being a little bit, for me anyway, personally, a little bit too wet, yes? Can you go back just one page? Because it says there on the damper. Oh, where, sorry? Yeah, just go back to that one that you were just on. Uh, what, further back? No, no, no. The, the, the crop chart. The crop chart. Oh, oh sorry, okay, go on. You can see there how he hasn't had any water for two days, and at the bottom you've got your air dampers closed, and then yeah. obviously he's put water on where he's taken the plastic off, Yeah. He's opened his air damper back up, I think that's just where the total is of one bulb before. Do you want about 15.7? Yeah. That's a total. Oh, that's a total. Oh, yeah. So, sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I understand what you're saying now, yeah. I that's a total. Very yeah, yeah. So he's stopped the watering Yeah, there. yeah. But then, so he's taken the plastic off and introduced yeah. the yeah. straight yeah. up taking the plastic off. Yeah, that's one of the interesting things I didn't mention, actually, Mark. It's a very good point you raised there. One of the things that you find with the plastic, if you look at a typical situation, people can be walking anything between 20 and even 40 litres a square metre in case run, depending on which 
country you're in and, and, and what they're doing, yes? One of the big things with putting this plastic on is you don't have to put anything like as much water into the case run because you stop the evaporation process. And, and the big question is, is, is we know what we put on, but we don't know what we're losing. And what we're actually finding on average um, in these situations is we're probably losing up to a third of the water that we would normally use when we use the plastic. So in other words, you could put two thirds of the water on with the plastic and you'll actually end up with the casing being a similar moisture as if you didn't have the plastic on and you had three thirds, yeah? Are they using any other chemicals as well, like octave or like dingling or whatever? No. They're no. just purely using your product? Correct. Yeah, yeah, they're not using any chemicals. We got very, you know, some farmers use chemicals, but very few now in the UK. Um, very little left we're allowed to use full stop. Yeah. yeah. We've got no insecticides. So, yeah, you've got to really find an alternative. Make sure your door's shut. It's all about physical eradication. Totally yeah. Hard. Yeah. 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 I think one of the challenges to make you get your head around, Stuart, in our part of the world anyway, Australia and to an extent New Zealand, is the uh, pro predominantly phase three and high fill weights. Hmm. So in terms of putting plastic over the top, um, the challenge is about temperature. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. There's a lot more if, you, if you have um, control of your case run, and you're perhaps coming up towards 25, 26, at six, seven days before you air, um, you shouldn't experience any issue with overheating. We, we've certainly not seen um, anything of that sort, unless you have a problem that you've carried forward from small level. Mm. What for the weight, so? Um, 90, 95. Mm. Phase, phase three. Phase three, yeah. Because mm. yeah, on mm. here, he, he's not even putting any cooling and he's heating mm. the room up 100% on day one. Mm. Huh? Mm. See, we fill a room and our compost comes in at 30 degrees, we've got 100% cooling yeah. mm. to try and maintain the temperature. Yeah, yeah. And then we're at, we'll be at 30 degrees for a few days. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, but that can, all those things, people are doing different things, like, for example, controlling that temperature in the beginning. Some people, for example, put a lot of water on in the beginning to get the compost moisture up and to try and put the fire out or whatever and get things under control. Most people are putting the plastic on once they've got control of the compost. And something's definitely happening. I mean, I had the same thing in the beginning when people started to do this. I was thinking, you put this plastic on here, it's going to go up and it's gonna but it doesn't seem to do it well certainly not for like 48 72 hours so whatever must be something to do with the fact that whatever you're doing you're putting this on it's it's controlling the evaporation but it also seems to be controlling the temperature now I'm not saying if you haven't already got the temperature under control already then you know you know you, you know you could get issues but um, certainly you know these composts as well, that would be a 21 day spawn run to... Mm, not 21 days, we're typically in, in Europe, yeah, 17 probably. Yeah. Well. Yeah. If you had a 21 day run, um, that actually is probably tamer and slower to come into life. Yeah. yeah. Used a lot more to just grow in the store. There used to be um, some growers in the UK that were growing on blocks that were taking in a, a tonnage <laughs> to the transport room. And they would do them over different lengths of spawn runs. And the, the 21, well, one guy had much of 23 days. They were always two or three days late into cropping, just naturally. The pins would sit on the bed and not move. You know. But they, they actually needed a bit of support. They, never, they were never overactive. That activity was long gone. You know. So if there was activity there, maybe they, that's what we bought so, 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 you know, somewhere. Like hmm. Yep. Okay. That's all. No problem. You're welcome.
be the putting on the plastic, the labour, What have you done at any of your vote studies versus the extra 10% or 8% yield? Have you done this? Well, yeah, well, the growers, the, the growers are basically doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm told, in terms of the economics, you know, when you're doing both together, the cost of the complement is, is pretty similar, a little bit lower than your regular cost of your supplement. And as you know, your regular cost of supplement is a relatively small amount for what you gain in comparison. So um, uh, growers who are doing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there, there, there's, la there's labour involved, but as you say, like there's big farms there that that, that, that are doing it. Uh, I mean, the plastic is, yeah. I mean, there's labour involved. It typically takes a 600 square metre room, probably takes about an hour for two men to do. Is that, is that tray farm or shelf farm? Is that really a shelf farm. I've actually got some tray farmers who are actually doing it, which is obviously even more of a job, because obviously with a tray farm, it's you know, it's it's even more. But you know, at the end of the day. They they, 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 they they see a benefit from it. So it's um I guess that's the key for all of them, right? Is, is to actually really understand the living through yourself the actual cost benefit of all the all the related numbers to the cost producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean at the, at the end of the day, you know yourself, you know, if you, if you gain one or two kilos a square meter, yes, it's you need to put an awful lot of cost in to uh, get to that level, yeah. Does it doesn't take much to um turn that around and then, then also the big thing as well Michael is if you're okay it's one thing to talk about yield we've always talked about yield with supplement but when you're starting to see some other advantages out there yes maybe things that could help with dry matter content shelf life possibly some protection to the mushrooms these other factors suddenly then it becomes you know even more interesting. And that's that's what growers are getting very excited about. You know, with the, we're working at the moment. Yes, it's not just this. It's not even really just the yield thing. Is they're actually they're jumping more onto these other factors. Uh, we'll probably have some more questions for you after the last. Yeah. Session. No sure. So we'll break for more tea. Um, we'll say twenty-five.